Hey guys, it's Stefan, and today I'm gonna to be reading the seventh chapter of Eddie and the Lizard Man. Now in the last chapter, Eddie had a very strange conversation with his boss, Kevin. At one moment, Kevin was yelling at him, and in the next, he was kind and understanding. Why? Let's keep reading to find out. Chapter seven, a friend, not a pet. Back at Eddie's apartment, uh, sorry, uh, apartment is too generous a term. Let's use the term living quarters. You see, Eddie's living quarters couldn't really be referred to as an apartment because technically it wasn't one. It was actually a utility room where the owner of the building allowed Eddie to live in exchange for maintenance services. So allow me to start again. Back at his living quarters, which was a small single room space about six feet wide by eight feet long, Eddie took a glass jar from the top of one of his many shelves and placed into it the snake-like skin he found earlier that day. The jar was labeled Reptilian Sheddings and was filled with skins similar to the one Eddie just added. He did this while recounting some of the things he overheard Kevin saying in his office. And then Kevin said, tonight's the night, but in a very suspicious way. Now, you may be wondering who Eddie was telling this to. Well, Eddie was talking to Dog, a smallish beagle that was more of a friend than a pet. And actually, he was very much more a friend than a pet because Eddie didn't technically own Dog. He did feed Dog on a fairly frequent basis, but many friends have similar relationships where one friend does the majority of the eating and the other does the majority of the feeding. In fact, the only reason Dog was permitted to be on the premises was because he was a friend and not a pet. You see, the landlord of the building had a no pets rule, so it was important that Dog remained solely a friend. As a friend, Dog was often a sounding board for Eddie's thoughts, ideas, and theories. He was a great listener, but wasn't afraid to offer his opinion or ask questions that Eddie hadn't thought about, although most of his questions did revolve around food in some way or another. Oh yes, now, this is important. To the casual observer, Dog's accent made him sound like most dogs, with the iconic bark, moan, or whine. However, over the years, Eddie had developed the ability to understand Dog clearly, despite the heavy canine accent. Such abilities often develop between friends who spend a lot of time together. So much so that really close friends have been known to communicate whole sentences of feelings and intentions with only a look. Such was the relationship between Dog and Eddie. So when Dog whined in response to Eddie's comment about what Kevin had said earlier that day, it made complete sense that Eddie responded by saying, uh, I don't know, maybe. The main problem here is that I myself, have never had the ability to understand Dog's accent. It's simply too strong. Therefore, I cannot offer an accurate translation. All I can do is divulge the sound and inflection of Dog's barks, moans, and whines, and by doing so, give a general idea of the meaning. Anyway, Eddie continued by saying, but one thing's for sure, Dog. It just keeps getting weirder and weirder out there. Dog barked in response to Eddie, which probably meant something along the lines of a yep or no kidding, or maybe even, you can say that again. At any rate, Dog seemed to agree with Eddie's statement. And happy that Dog agreed, Eddie closed the lid to the jar, placed it back on the shelf with other light collections, and turned on his radio. The radio gave a short crackle, followed by the introduction to one of Eddie's main devotions, man's conspiracies. Eddie might be kind of a lonely guy, but he's got a really good friend in Dog. And having friends that you understand and that understand you is a really wonderful thing. I've got uh, four brothers and one sister, and I can honestly say they are uh, my favorite people to be around. Why? Because I can just be me. But what about you? Do you have a really great friend? And what makes them so special? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, you can get your own copy of Eddie and the Lizard Man by clicking in the links in the description box. And if you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe, and join me next time as I continue reading Eddie and the Lizard Man in chapter eight, Man's Conspiracies. Stay curious.